So welcome to A Course in Miracles, and now we do workbook lesson 160. I am at home. We'll stop. Shouldn't say anything more, but it says, I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. Well, truth be said, if I am at home, love is all I am. The idea that fear is a stranger here would mean that I'm still between dreams. In truth, you've never experienced fear because fear is of the imagination. If there's no thought, there can be no fear. There's no thought, there's no imagination. If there's no imagination, there's no identity. I as an entity in my imagination. And if there's no identity, there's no fear because what gets hurt, killed, destroyed? The identity, the entity. And so fear always surrounds the entity. And if there's no identity, there's no thought or idea. If there's no idea, there's no thought. If there's no thought, there's just I am this. Fear is a stranger to the ways of love. Identify, identity identifies. Identify with fear, the identity with fear, always around its death or demise or suffering. And you will be a stranger to yourself who knows not what fear is. And thus, you are unknown to you. What is yourself, capital S, remains an alien to the part of you, the illusionary part of you, which thinks that it is real, but different from yourself, which is why we always, spiritual people always say, I don't belong here. From the day I was five years old, I felt I didn't belong here. You are always here now. What doesn't belong is the idea of what you are. But what you truly are is not an idea, but a sense awareness. Who could be sane in such a circumstance? Eight billion people, all insane, all believe they should, they don't belong. Who but a madman could believe he is what he is not and judge against himself? And how often do we beat ourselves up because we didn't turn out to be the beautiful, tall, handsome, sexy, beautiful, blah, 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 we're supposed to be, and we didn't get the lucky charms and the lucky life and the perfect job and the perfect career and the perfect title and the fame and the fortune and the money and the power. And so we hate what we become, and because we hate that which we're becoming, we project it in the world, attack the world, and we get trapped in it, constantly trying to prove to ourselves and others, which is the self-same thing, that we're worthy and, and deserve to be loved, even though we don't believe. Because we've bought into the belief, the be lie f, belie, be lie, that we are that which we're not. There is a stranger in our midst, in our mind, who comes from an idea so far into the truth, he speaks a different language, looks upon the world, truth does not know. The world, the truth doesn't know the world and understands what truth regards as senseless. The world of senses, feelings, tasting, seeing, hearing, feeling. Senseless senses. True sense is awareness, the only sense we have. Even intuition is often tainted with feeling sensation. And therefore tainted. Forget about intuition. Go beyond. Go into sense awareness. Just silently still and joyfully peaceful. Stranger yet, he does not recognize to whom he comes. And yet maintains his home belongs to him. While he is alien now, who is at home. And yet, how easy it would be to say, this is my own. Here, here now, be here now, I belong. And I will not leave because a madman says, I'm unworthy, I don't belong here, I'm not good enough. The, 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 the sequence of falling asleep, I fall asleep, I forget what I am. I imagine I must have been created by something. I feel abandoned by that because I recognize not myself nor that which created me. I'm abandoned, therefore I was unworthy. I'm unworthy, I must have done something wrong. If I've done something wrong, that is sin. If I'm, if I'm sinful, I'm going to be destroyed. Fear enters the dream. 
and each fracture thereof has the self same sequence inside it, which it needs to let go of. What reason is there for not saying this? What could be the reason except that you had asked a stranger, identified with a stranger, to take your place and let you be stranger to your true self? No one would let himself be dispossessed so needlessly unless he thought there were another home more suited to him, another fantasy, another adventure. We want to make memory of an illusion and then wonder why we suffer memory. Who is the stranger? It is fear or you who are unsuited to the home which God provided to his son. Do you not belong in that which is the joyous extension of all there is? Or are you really home in fear, in the hope, living in fear, hoping for a better tomorrow? Is fear your own? Is fear his own, created in his likeness? If fear is true, then God is not. If fear is true, then you are not. Would God extend himself into fearful dreams? God is not dreaming. You, the extension, Holy Son of God, you dream. Is it fear that loves complete, that love completes? Is it completed by fear? There is no home that can be sheltered to love and fear. They cannot coexist. If you are real, then fear must be illusion. And if fear is real, then you do not exist at all. And part of that sentence is true. You do not exist as this at all, but you exist as the eternal light, which is love, perfect, defenseless, innocent, without fear. How simple then the question is resolved. Who fears but denied himself and said, I am a stranger in here, a stranger in the world I dreamt up. And so I leave my home to one more like me than myself, one I imagine myself to be, and give him all I thought belonged to me. And then I'm surprised he never accepts it, and it's never good enough for him, because him isn't real, and it imagines everything which keeps you bound to trying to please him. And that's why we've projected it outside ourselves and imagined the Satan, because we don't want to take responsibility that we are unhappy in our truthful here now home. Now he's exiled out of necessity, not knowing who he is, uncertain of all things, but this, he is not himself, and that his home has been denied to him. And then we want to go off to India, where we have a billion people to eat, pray, love, and awaken to self, because some Guruji with no teeth is going to tell you who you are. How can me telling you who you are make you realize what you are? I can point to the truth within you, but it's closer to you than I can get. Because I appear as a body, mind, and so do you. And the truth is closer to you than your heart. Because your heart's inside you as you are inside God. What does he search for now? What can he find? A stranger to himself can find no home wherever he may look. So no matter how far you go on whichever adventure, wherever you go, there you are. For he made the truth impossible to recognize in himself because he's looking outwards as opposed to go within. His way is lost, except a miracle, a miracle, a change of mind will search him out and show him that he is no longer a stranger now. But it can only search you out when you have asked, and you've asked to know thyself truthfully. A miracle will come when his home, his capital S self remains, the truth of what you are, the memory for God in you, your Holy Spirit, which is the extension of God's Holy Spirit. It asked no stranger in and took no alien thought Thought to be itself. For we are thoughts appearing in form. Thought forms projected into physicality. And the thought of what? The dreaming mind that forgot itself. And try to imagine what it was. And every thought the dreaming mind had imagining what it was took form. And hence 8 billion different appearances of different thoughts trying to remember what they are in a slightly different way. Yet what's the truth of all of us? The eye within us. The light of awareness in us. The energy spark in us all is what's true. The appearance is false. The miracle will come because you've asked and you hear and you request that by your will in your home, in your home, yourself remains as your home. You are the home. You are the kingdom in which God abides. It asked no stranger in and took no alien thought to be itself. You're now forgetting the identity. 
and it will call its own unto itself in recognition of what is its own. Be thyself knowingly. Abide in silent stillness. This course is quite intellectual, but it becomes devotion once you set the questions down. So jnani becomes bhakti. Except for those who teach, who will use the concepts of intellect, jnani, in order to bring people into the devotion of the true self we all are. Who is the stranger? Is he not the one yourself calls not? You are unable now to recognize a stranger in your midst, for you have given him your rightful place. It is yourself as certain of its own as God is of his son, as source is of its extension, of light is of its infinite, eternal, peaceful, joyous, loving light. He cannot be confused about creation. He is sure of what belongs to him. No stranger can interpose between his knowledge, his knowing of himself, and his son's reality, who is the knowing of itself. He does not know of strangers. He is certain of his son. He is certain of your extension. Just as you are certain, your hands an extension of your arm, an extension of your body. It's yours. Your hand may not know it's you, but you know your hand is yours. In illusion. God's certainty suffices. He, who he knows to be his son, belongs where he has set his son forever, in God's mind, in God's energy essence, as the extension thereof. He has answered you who ask, you the body mind who asked to search because you wanted to be happy. You may say you want God or you want to know enlightenment or the, the makeup of your essential nature, but what you really want to do is be permanently happy. In certainty, it will never change. And he has answered you who ask, who is the stranger that I fear may fear the self not? Hear his voice assure you, the inner quiet voice within yourself that speaks not in words, but in awareness. Quietly and sure, quietly and sure in awareness that you are not a stranger to your father, to your source, nor is your creator stranger made to you, for you share the self-same essence. The ocean isn't looking for the makeup of the water. The ocean is the water. It knows itself. The wave is a movement on the outside of water, of the, of the ocean. The wave is part of the ocean, is, is the deepest depth in every fish that swims in it. It's all ocean. Whom God has joined remains forever one. At home in him, no stranger to himself. And who is God joined? Himself with his son. They are the extension joined. Not joined, but extended forever. Today we offer thanks that Christ has come to search the world for what belongs to him. So the dream is now awake and now is sharing his light with all these fractured thoughts and forms that appear as bodies, activities in the dream. His vision sees no strangers. Why? He knows them to be activities of his own mind, but beholds his own and joyously unites with them for he dreamt them up as activities of his dream, searching for himself. So he thought of himself in 8 billion ways right now. And yet all 8 billion return him to himself awaken in his father. They see him as stranger, for they do not recognize themselves. How would they recognize the self-same essence? Yet as they give him welcome, they remember the I am in all of us. And he leads them gently home again to where they belong, to where they've never left, which is the heart center, which is where we always abide. Be here now, forever. Eternity is always here. Not one does Christ forget. Not one. Why? Because he's dreamt it up. You don't wake up in the morning and then a part of you is missing because you forgot it in your dream. When you wake up in the morning, there's not one the character in your dream standing next to you in your bed. Oh, I woke up first. Where have you been? You've still been dreaming. No, no. You wake up, all your characters dissolve. But for you to wake up peacefully, all your characters have to sing one joyous amen and be the light of awareness, which lights your mind up from the inside. You don't need a light from the outside to wake you up. Not one he fails to give you to remember, because it's the one self remembering itself as itself, that your home may be completed and perfect as it was established. The eternal extension of God's essence, heaven. He has not forgotten you. How can you? How can he forget you when you're a part of himself? But you will not remember him until you look on all as he does. And you will not find peace in this world until you accept all of it as you. The entire universe, 
not push away from it, not detach, not you know, detach from it, be non-attached to it, non-attached to an outcome, realizing it's all you, connected to all of it, yet wanting nothing from it all, but to be yourself knowingly. Vital life, but who will you will not remember him until you look on all as he has, as he does, and he, as he always will, non-judgment. I innocently dreamt myself up as nine septillion characters. I now call them all back to myself and gently let them awaken to self and realize I'm dreaming it all up. Who denies his brother is denying him. Who denies his brother is denying himself. And thus refusing to accept the gift of sight, the gift of awakening, the gift of awareness by which his self, true self, capital S, is clearly recognized. His home remembered. And salvation, awakened to self, we don't awaken, the dreamer awakens, has come. And that's a vital understanding. The closest you'll get is you'll come to realize this isn't true. Thoughts, sensations, feelings, not true. The abidance of self in silent stillness, that's my truth. And that's the truth I share with all of it. That is the love with which I love God and all of it. It's all me. Not the body activities pretending to act as something else. Temporarily, they reflect you back at you. So that when you see outside you, you realize, oh, why is this showing up? Because it's still in me. There's a judgment in me. I'm seeing that. I forgive the judgment. The smiles come. The gentleness comes. The path of least resistance. Acquire nothing. Share all. I used to chop wood, fetch water, you know, chop wood, fetch water, and feed the kids because I wanted to be a good chopper, wood chopper. Now I chop wood, fetch fetch the water, feed the kids out of the joyous expression of what I am. I'm not searching to be happy. My happiness extends to all of my selves because as God extended and created me as the extension of his love, so I extend the love I am as God's love and share my love root, knowingly, consciously awakened with the rest of my selves so my selves all return to the one self we are and the dreamer awakens, the dream, it's a symbol. So Atman, Brahman, Atman recognizes the self-same essence as Brahman. The jiva, the dreamer, the dream character, realizes it's the Atman. Instantly, Atman realizes it's, it's Brahman. The dreamer, the body-mind, ego identity, realizes it's actually the dreamy mind, the Christ. And the instant Christ is recognized, it, it only knows it's the self as the extension of God. Be you that knowingly. Be you that knowingly here now. You've asked and you have received. Don't try and act spiritual. Don't try and dress spiritual, behave in a certain, just be yourself authentically as the body-mind identity you are, but realize the truth of you is the gentle light within that looks upon all of it unconditionally, realizes all of it is itself, and all of it is non-judged and therefore accepted and loved. What is appearing in that which is. Amen.